in part two of our explanation or exploration of the normal table. We're still going to be using this table. The problem is that we're not going to originally know what the z-score is. Instead, we're going to be given means and standard deviations and asked to calculate a z-score for a specific x value. So what really is going on here is we're going to have to start with raw values from the distribution. We're going to have to translate them into something the table can read using z-scores. Once we've got the z-scores and able to translate them into the table, we can find probabilities from the table, but then the table values we'll have to manipulate based on whether it's a greater than question, less than question, or a between question. So there's a lot of moving parts here. It's why I break this lecture into three parts, because it's really important that you understand what's going on with the normal distribution for everything to come. And I really want to focus on the specific skills that come with the normal distribution. So lecture one really focused on how to use the table, how to read the table to find probabilities. This lecture is going to focus on how I can convert a, a distribution I'm given to something that the table can understand. So let's say that we want to find a value of z such that the area to the left of z is 0 0.1500. We're going to start by figuring out how to find that 15th percentile from this table. So we want to find the closest probability to 0 0.1500 in the center of our table and trace it back to a z-score. Basically, we're going in reverse. Instead of knowing the z-score and using it to find the probability, we know a probability and we want to trace it back to find the z-score. So, what we're going to do is first decide are we on the negative side or the positive side of the table. If I look at the table, because negative and positive are split down the middle where the mean, median, and mode are, 0.5 and less is on the negative side, more than 0.5 is on the positive side. Really, 0.5 itself is 0, 0.00, so it's on both the negative and positive side. But if I have a probability less than 50%, I should be looking on the negative side. If I have a probability greater than 50%, I should be looking on the positive side. Here, we're looking for the 15th percentile. Since 15% is less than 0.5, we should go to the negative side. Once we're on the negative side, I go down the first column until I see something bigger than 0.015. As I'm reading down, I see that in the row marked negative 2.2 is 0.0139. In the row marked negative 2.1 is 0.0179. So I know that the 0 0.0150 occurs somewhere between those two. Apologies, that wasn't the right thing. I'm not looking for 0.015, that would be 1.5%. I'm looking for the 15th percentile, so I need to go even further down. I see that in the row negative 1.1, I get 0.1357, and in the row negative 1.0, I get 1.1587. I'm looking for 0.1500, so once I go to something larger, I know it's happening in the row above. In the row mark negative 1.1, as I read over, it's 0 0.1357, 0 0.1335, 0 0.1314. That's going too low, so let's go to the row below that. 0 0.1587, 0 0.1562, 0 0.1539, 0 0.1515, 0 0.1492. I see in the row mark negative 1.0, 1.02, is 0.1539. 1.03 negative is 0.1515 and negative 1.04 is 0.1492. So really what that tells me is between these two is where it's happening. In class, I'd accept either negative 1.03 or negative 1.04. The system might be a little less lenient. It looks like it requires you to answer negative 1.04 because 0.1492 is closer than 0.1500. Really, I want to warn you that the system thinks you're using a calculator that is somewhat more accurate than this table. I don't teach it in this class from a calculator because I don't require the calculator that has it. 
and I don't want everybody to have to pay $120 to have that calculator for this class. So I'm really using the table as somewhat of a workaround. There may be times where that means your table is not as accurate as what they want in the system. When that happens, send it to me as an Ask Your Teacher. I can replace it and show what you actually wanted to put into the system, but it will not end up getting you points off. It's just something that you need to be aware. Sometimes what's written in the table won't be the exact answer that I'm looking for. All of that said, if I was asked what Z value has an area of 0.4013 to its left, I'd want to look in the middle of the table for 0.4013. I know it's on the negative side because it's less than 0.5. There is an exact table entry of 0.4013, and it occurs at a z-score of negative 0.25. What z-value represents the 60th percentile means we're looking in the center of the table for 0 0.6000. That would be on the positive side of my table. Where I see the thing closest to 0 0.6000, is right around 0 0.25 or 0 0.26. 0 0.25 gets me to a value of 0.5987, and 0 0.26 gets me to a value of 0 0.6026. So I think the closer one would be 0 0.25. There's no real reason that these are exact opposites of each other, other than the fact that 40% and 60% add to 1, so they're both nearly the same distance in either direction. But really, the skill I'm trying to emphasize here is finding a value in the middle and using it to trace back to the outside z-score. Standardizing a normal distribution requires us to calculate a z-score by finding that z-score as the x value we're hoping to interpret minus the mean of the distribution, divided by the standard deviation of the distribution. I always write the parentheses on top to remind students, do the subtraction before you do the division. If you try and do it all at once without parentheses, you will get wrong answers. From this z-score formula, a negative z-score indicates the observation is that many standard deviations below the mean. A positive z-score tells us that the observation is that many standard deviations above the mean. So for instance, if I was told that the distribution has a mean of 100 and a standard deviation of 10, and I wanted to know how many standard deviations above or below the mean an x value of 95 was, I'd do the x value 95 minus the mean 100 divided by the standard deviation 10. I always do the top subtraction or addition first, 95 minus 100 gives me negative 5. I then do the division, negative 5 divided by 10 gives me negative 0 0.50. Really, it gives me negative 0 0.5, but I always include that extra digit just to make sure it agrees with the way my table is written. So I would say this as negative 0 0.50. In general, I always want you to round to exactly two decimals so that you can find the answer in the table. Here we're going to find the z-score for each of these situations. Again, I recommend you try it on your own, pause the video, and then when we come back, I'll go over the answers. So, in problem 1, it would have been 5.2 minus 4 is 1.2, divided by 3 is a z-score of 0 0.40. For number 2, I would have done 0 minus a negative 10, minus a negative 10 would be positive 10, when I then divide by the standard deviation of 4, I get a z-score of 2.50. For problem 3, I would take the x value 0.44 minus the mean of 0 0.6. 0 0.44 minus 0 0.6 is negative 0.16. When I divide that by the standard deviation of 0 0.09, I get a z-score of negative 1.78. It really gives me negative 1.7777 repeating but I round it to two decimals as negative 1.78. In problem four here, I take the x value of 0.49 minus the mean of 0.6. That would give me negative 0.11. When I divide that by the standard deviation of 0.09, I get a z-score of negative 1.22. Again, work this formula, try it on your own, make sure you get the same things I do. 
and always make sure you're going to this extra decimal place or rounding to two decimal places because everything needs to be read from this chart eventually. Notice that if I wanted to interpret these, the first one would be 0.4 standard deviations above the mean. Second one would be 2.5 standard deviations above the mean. Third one would be 1.78 standard, devi standard deviations below the mean, below because of the negative. And the final one would be 1.22 standard deviations below the mean, again, below because of the negative. Find the z-score in each of the following situations. Then once we find the z-score, we're gonna find the probability. So to use these z-scores to find probabilities, basically we look them up in the table the same way that we did in 6.1. We then consider whether it's a less than, more than, or between question. So for this less than question, I can use the exact table probability I find from the z-score I calculate. For this more than situation, I'm gonna to have to do one minus the probability I find. When it's a between question like this, I'm gonna to have to do the larger p-value minus the smaller p-value. So for each of these three, we found the z-scores in the previous slide, we now just need to look up and find the associated probabilities. So here we previously found a z-score of 0 0.40, the p-value is 0 0.6554. Because it's a less than question, we don't have to go any further. We can just report that p-value as the answer to the question. In problem two, we found a z-score of 2.50. The table value for 2.50 is 0.9938. Because it's a more than question, I can't just report the value I find in the table. Instead, because the table always tells me to the left, to do more than or to the right, I need to do one minus that table value. If I did 1 minus 0.9938, I would get an answer of 0.0062, which is the correct probability of getting something more than a z-score of 2.50. For this between question, 0.44 and 0.49, both with the mean of 0.6 and standard deviation of 0.09, we found z-scores of negative 1.78 and negative 1.22. I look up those associated probabilities. Negative 1.78 points me to a p-value of 0 0.0375. Negative 1.22 points me to a p-value of 0.1112. I always take larger p-value minus smaller p-value. That way I'll always get a positive probability. 0.1112 minus 0 0.0375 gives me a final answer of 0 0.0737. The probability of getting point between 0.44 and 0.49, if the mean is 0.6 and the standard deviation of point is 0.09, is about 7.37%.